my name is Kasha Mija. I'm the Sales and Project Manager at Kelmesa Inc. I will be moderating today's session. So you were able to all get a quick glimpse of, of IMM Cologne, and that's why we are here today to talk about the upcoming event. Now I will turn it over to uh, Meta Peterson. All right, well, uh, uh, well, welcome everybody. My name is Meta Peterson. I'm president of uh, Kelmesa Incorporated. Uh, and I just wanted to take the, the opportunity to, to say just a, just a few words of welcome and then we'll hand it over to, to the interesting speakers. Um, so as, as, as Kasia mentioned, um, we are the North American subsidiary of Colmesa GmbH. Uh, we are basically the North American sales and marketing arm of, of Colmesa in Cologne, Germany. And um, with that, we, uh, we promote all of the, the shows that take place in Cologne and around the world, um, uh, and uh, primarily all the, the furniture and design related shows. Um, we are located here in Chicago um, and um, have uh, had, had operations here for the last uh, almost 18 years, actually. Um, so I wanted to um, share with you just who, who our, our speakers are uh, this, this morning. And I know for many of you, uh, afternoon, evening, um, because I know we, we have participants uh, from, uh, I believe, uh, Canada, from, of course, from, from Germany, from Portugal, uh, from uh, Mexico. Um, so very international audience, uh, which is, is really terrific. Um, so we will start out with uh, Claire Steinbrück, um, who is director of IMM Cologne. Uh, Claire has been with Kölnmesse for about four years um, and is holding very firm reins on IMM Cologne and everything that happens in, in conjunction with the show. Um, and um, after Claire, we're going to have uh, two um, keynote speakers. Um, our first guest speaker will be Guy Perez with uh, Ogomotion. Guy is Director of Global Sales. And Ogomotion is a manufacturer of adjustable bases for bedroom furniture. Um, and uh, Ergomotion has exhibited at uh, IMM for, for many years, actually. And Guy has very kindly offered to provide his um, perspective as to uh, the IMM show and, and what the show has, has done for them. Um, and after Guy, um, we are very pleased to, to also have uh, Mary Buderman join us. Mary is a contributing editor uh, with Interior Design Magazine. Um, Mary is actually located in, in Berlin and uh, is a um, contributing writer to a number of uh, design-related uh, publications in, in North America, um, and uh, in particular, uh, currently, uh, Internet uh, Interior Design Magazine. So we are, we're really thrilled to, uh, to have both of them um, on board today. And um, uh, as a matter of fact, Guy will, will probably be, be assisted by, by his colleague, uh, Monica, uh, down the, the road as well. So, um, so um, the, uh, our uh, agenda today is just very briefly, um, Claire will give uh, the uh, overview of uh, what is new in relation to IMM with the new hall layouts and events and so on. Um, and then we'll hear the exhibitor perspective uh, from Guy with the uh, locomotion. And um, last but not least, uh, Mary um, has very kindly offered to provide her perspective uh, as, as an attending uh, member of, of the, the media. So um, with that, let me hand the, uh, the word over to Claire. Go ahead, Claire. So uh, thank you very much and good afternoon from, from Germany. I'm also in Berlin right now, normally located in Cologne. And um, so thank you for the introduction and for organizing the webinar and also for your participation and the time, uh, taking your time to, to listen to our webinar. Um, maybe just some words um, about me. Um, I'm working since 2003 for the uh, trade fair shows and uh, I've worked 13 years for Messe Frankfurt and I lived a lot in Germany, but also abroad. And now since four years, um, I'm working for Köln Messe and um, my first job was uh, organizing shows abroad and internationally, and now I'm responsible for IMM Cologne in my August, the second year. And um, my passion beside organizing trade fairs is interior design, and I think since I can, uh, I can, I can think. So um, I think this is the best match that I am doing finally the show and the, with, the, with the topic that I, I prefer the most. So um, what makes IMM Cologne um, unique? First of all, I think we're all having a very challenging year this year. So more than ever, 
we are all uh, thirsty to start a new year and to look into the future what brings um, and what comes up in this um, upcoming interior design year. And so I am M. Cologne is the first international show who starts every year in January and who shows the trends, the innovations of the year and is uh, after public holidays, the first meeting and business place uh, to, to, to see each other again. So what is special um, beside um, that we start in January is that we have the full coverage of every category. That means that um, we're not only the international ones, uh, the international, the most international. We have, I think this year we had 76% of our um, exhibitors came from abroad, which shows that really the world shows the world what is going on. And this from ready to market and very basic up to very luxury and high end and exclusive brands and um, and combined with newcomers that are um, you know, startups and, and, and um, new designers. So this is, I think, very interesting diversity of Ironman Cologne. Um, we are driven, and I think this is the future of trade fairs, we are driven a lot about content. It's not only a place where we meet, we need to discuss, we need to discover, we need to maybe also edge a bit that we um, try with our show to um, have the vision of future of living, which means to present visionary concepts, to present you um, maybe new solutions and to maybe also to provoke in somehow. Um, so this is also something we're working constantly on as the concept. And what I said also is that we are not only concerning our exhibitor, we are very, every second um, visitor um, who's visiting I am in Cologne is an international visitor. And it is still a very business um, minded um, platform where 76% of our visitors have a sea level. And so decisions are taken in January in Cologne. I don't know if I can change from my phone. So just here you see some, 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 some hard facts. Uh, we had 1,233 exhibitors this year from 53 countries. And um, so in the years with the Living Kitchen, we have even a higher uh, quote. We have 11 halls uh, with, a, with, a, with a full range of, of, uh, of uh, um, products in, from interior design with 2.6 million square feet. And this year we had the chance to be before uh, uh, before Corona and we had about 130,000 visitors. And um, maybe also interesting for you is we started and launched in 2019 for 2020 a cooperation with Maison et Objet. Also for reason of saying, okay, there is, if we can speak about a supply chain and somehow a supply chain between IMM in Cologne and Maison et Objet in Paris, because you have the whole over overage from what is interior design and accessories, etc. And for visitors coming from uh, non-EU countries, so you, uh, we had this um, um, buy one get two and I hope and I'm very convinced that we're going to continue that for 2021 too so you have one one trip and you can see in Cologne uh, the furniture and then more going into the objects and accessories in Paris um, and as I said we have 78 percent of our visitors no 76 I'm sorry there's a mistake but 76 percent of our visitors are sea level and every second year um, we are um, together with Living Kitchen which is an international kitchen show so in 2021 we're going to take place with uh, the Living Kitchen again and what is special as well we, we have one of the biggest um, ground floors in trade trade fair floors uh, in, in, in the world and we are really situated in the in the city center so you can see on the other side of the river you can see the cathedral and this is I think if you ask uh, um, a Cologne citizen this is really the heart so you see we're very close to the heart of the city uh, which is very charming due to the infrastructure that we are part of where the people go and, 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 and where the heart beats. Um, so speaking about I am M. Cologne. This is a massive show, which you can see has a lot of space. And I think, and I do believe that in the future, um, trade fairs are made more and more for business matching. So you need to bring the right people together. And the reason why you come to a trade fair, if you're a visitor or an exhibitor, is that you want to reach the right person, the right people. And so um, when I started for working for MM Cologne, we had a lot of different colors, a lot of different names for every hall, and it was kind of um, confusing. And it's 
still very confusing, but we try to bring some structure into it. So if we have, we have like two main sectors and the blue ones, the pure ones, are the halls you need to see if you want to go into the very exclusive and this very luxury um, 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 editorial um, um, categories. And so the name for those blue halls are called pure. And if you go to the red halls, we have said, okay, we need to, um, to stop to cluster all the halls only in products. The people coming and visiting, they need inspiration, they need interior worlds. So we broke up with this clustered product halls and we said, we're going to make interior worlds. And so um, divided in clusters for young living and ready to market and um, divided in the interiors world like upper middle class um, so that visitors and exhibitors can meet in the right interior worlds and somehow. So on the next page, you see uh, like a bit more uh, the cluster. Um, the green living kitchen halls are every second year are the kitchen halls. And um, we are um, renovating and building and, and constructing a lot on our ground floor. And in January 2021, we're going to open a new hall, which is the one plus hall. And um, then we're going to launch the topic connect because we thought if we think about future of living, isn't it just too tiny to only think, okay, about a table and a nice chair and a sofa and a, and a bed? We need to think about smart solutions and also about um, in how, in some, in, if we think that home is like the core or the, the, the heart of our living, in what kind of future um, um, vision is this combined, combined with other branches, which means mobility, infrastructure, health, and, um, and of course, smart homes. So Connect is in somehow a completely new concept, which we are going to launch in 2021 and showing what kind of branch, branches uh, are connected with our way of living in the future. So uh, next please. We have uh, in, uh, in Cologne, we have one uh, colleague and she is um, responsible for our VIP visitors and taking care about um, who's visiting, who's invited, what kind of VIP packages, et cetera, PP. And we have put some, uh, some uh, names of the most important um, target groups concerning visitors, but also um, um, the names and brands who, who came to IMM Cologne for 2020. And we are also very happy that we have a colleague in, in, in the US working also for um, VIP visitors uh, coming and visiting um, from the US, coming and visiting um, IMM Cologne. So this is just a short overview. We were speaking about um, events. So of course you can open a hall and then the exhibitor comes and um, the quality of the presentation is very high and it's very inspirational, but I think you need to add a bit more, of, more salt. And so that's why we have a variety of different events and, and, and special events and um, content driven um, shows. And I think one of the most um, popular is uh, Das House. And this is the, the, well, I would say the heart of I am in Cologne because we have started years ago, we're now in the 10th edition, that we give a very internationally influential, influential designer or a design team the possibility to make their own installation and vision of living. And so it's a very personal idea and it's very interesting how those designers um, or this design team um, um, interpretate and create this, this, this installation. So two years ago, we had, for example, this was my first IMM, we had um, a young couple from Australia situated in Rotterdam, and they created a house which was um, divided uh, or which had the name Moves because they said, why do we have a room which is only for sleeping, another only for uh, a sitting room? I'm spending my day concerning the moods I have. And this was a very innovation, innovational, um, I think, concept to create a house. And um, celebrating in 2021, the 10th edition, we thought we need to do something new and very special. And um, we're going to replace the house uh, to Hall 11, which is where the very, uh, established um, luxury brands um, um, are um, placed. We're going to make um, this apartment house, which the, the idea is to, um, 
to connect and to, um, to, to, to reach even more the whole target group of contract and hospitality, hospitality uh, visitors um, due to the fact that we want to present um, long and short and midterm apartments. And we want to create that with three designers, which we had in the last uh, in the last editions. So Sebastian Hagner, for example, will be Luca Nicetto um, from Italy will will be will be one of the designers. And we have two um, 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 innovative um, sponsored um, apartments where we showcases those um, apartment solutions. So um, and this is also how a trade fair needs to develop because we need to think, okay, what kind of target group is developing? What kind of also business matching and somehow because we need to bring new uh, um, um, new maybe transforming from the classic visitor to to maybe a not new target group we had new moments which were installation and windows with trend windows we had also sustainability was a huge um, topic in the last years especially last year with Greta uh, where we had an installation where we were speaking and showcasing um, the topic of sustainability in material but also in, um, in multifunctional um, material on long living and this was um, a showcase with a pilot which were dedicated to furniture designed in, uh, in Germany but we will um, transform it and make it uh, a bit different in 2021. Maybe you can make the next chart. Um, we have the whole and nine, which is dedicated to the whole topic of sleep. So we had we have there also a like a communication platform. We had the pillow talk. We have um, launched in 2020 because the last days of IMM Cologne are B2D, B2C days. So we had in one hall, we said, okay, what would be interesting for um, design um, um, lovers um, from, from B2C, from the B2C sector. And so we launched together with the Blickfang um, a festival, which was called Design Fest. And um, we had workshops and bloggers coming there. And you could also bow, bow, buy at the, at the small booths um, stuff. And so this is also in somehow one, um, category which also accomplish a full range of different options and last but not least um, a very interesting um, uh, um, event was let's be smart smart village where we created three different worlds and showcases um, and um, and showing um, different products in the home sectors for smart living and we had, um, and sometimes you don't even see what is smart or what is not smart. So we had guided tours and they were uh, preserved from the first minute on because it was really interesting to, to see those, uh, those visionary and maybe even not so visionary showcases which have already entrance in our uh, homes already yet and now. And um, so speaking about a very, um, um, well, challenging uh, topic is uh, COVID-19, um, which has made the impossible possible. And um, uh, I have, uh, we have put a quote of our um, CEO because um, we can, uh, we will restart with our shows in September. Um, we have worked out very strongly with um, other German um, trade fair companies with the uh, Land Nordrest and Nordrhein Westfalia with a huge group of, uh, of experts. Um, how can we, with or after Corona, um, make trade fairs and bring people together? And um, so um, the safety to be safe is the most important thing that we that we all um, aim and that we want to protect. But I do believe that human being is like water and that we find our ways and that we need to find ways how we continue with this challenge of COVID-19. And I do believe that we need to meet and to feel. And, um, um, and honestly, I would prefer to see you in person than seeing you only in tiny black uh, or it's in tiny, tiny videos. Um, because I do believe that, that, that the importance of meeting people and face to face and to, to reach the five senses is still untouchable. And so we have worked out um, to restart the business, a be safety business campaign with measures, with rules, and how we can um, organize with the with safety nets for everyone um, trade fairs. So we start with the, with the first show in September. We're going to have Orgatech in um, 
in October. So myself, I am, uh, I am glad that I'm not the first show starting so that we have at least a, um, a, learn, a learning curve and that we can see, okay, and, and what do we maybe need to, to develop better or, or what worked already good. And I don't know how it is in the US, but uh, in Germany, um, I couldn't imagine to sit in a restaurant some weeks ago. Um, now I do sit in a restaurant. I couldn't imagine to drive again with a, I had to take a train. Um, I came to Berlin with a, with a train. So there is a new normal. And I do believe that we need to work and to fight for this new normal because it's for me personally, it's, it's, there is no option to sit isolated in a, in a home office uh, corner and to stay separated from people. So that's our vision beside vision of living, uh, future of living is the vision, yes, we take place and we look forward to see um, you all again or uh, to meet you. Okay, thank you so much, Claire. You're now welcome. would be a great time to address any questions you may have. Uh, as a reminder, you can write them into our chat room or the Q&A. You will see the both icons at the bottom of your screen. Um, so far, I don't believe I see any questions. But we'll take a minute and if, if not now, we can always address uh, questions at the end. So far, nothing. <laughs> Okay, I guess we will go ahead and move on. I don't see anyone typing. We'll continue with the presentation. All right. So our main speaker from Ergomotion is Mr. Guy Perez, as Meta already had introduced him in the beginning. And uh, Guy is based in the US headquarters in California, but also joining him this morning or afternoon for Monica is Monica Araujo, who's based in Europe, in, in Portugal. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, Ergomotion, well, Meta already provided a very nice introduction. Uh, they're headquartered in California. They have international offices in Europe and China, uh, and they have been exhibiting at IMM Cologne, again, as a reminder, since 2008. So the 2021 edition will mark your 13th year with us. So thank you for being our valued exhibitor. Um, and last but not least, uh, Ergomotion distributes in over 30 different countries. Guy and Monica, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. Yes, it's a pleasure. So uh, Guy and Monica, uh, tell us about your first IMM Cologne. Uh, Guy, you have a pretty interesting uh, story. Uh, so maybe kick off with that and tell us uh, what was your strategy going into your very first IMM Cologne uh, and what were your expectations? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for, for having us today. It's a pleasure. Uh, I do have a special connection to IMM. I've been going to IMM since 2008, as Cassia said. Um, and it's been, it's been good for us. It's been very good for us. The very first time we went, we were a startup. The company was, uh, got started in 2007. I got hired in January 8th, 2008. And three days into the, to the job, I had to go to Cologne for this trade show. Um, we actually don't have a picture of our booth and I'm glad we don't because it was very, very simple back then. We were a very young company, a startup. We barely had money to pay for the show. Um, so yeah, third day on the job, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at IMM for seven days and it was a great show. Um, it was a great experience. We learned a lot from it. And what um, our strategy was, we wanted to try to tap into the European market um, going into IMM. Uh, but what actually happened, which really surprised us, is we met people from all over the world. Uh, we actually opened an account in Chile and an account in uh, Australia because of, of IMM Cologne. Um, and uh, eventually we were able to land some, some European accounts as well. Um, so it was, it, was a, it was a great experience and we got pleasantly surprised of how international the, the, the show is. Wonderful. So Guy, how did you, how did you promote your brand? after your first, first, first edition, first few editions of, of exhibiting at IMM Cologne? Um, so we're, we're an adjustable bed based manufacturer. We focus on the adjustable beds. So we tend to sell to the mattress uh, manufacturers. And that's how we were promoting the brand as a, as a component to your mattress. 
that worked very well in the US, but we had to make some adaptations for the European market. Um, in the US, mattress manufacturers traditionally weren't manufacturing adjustable beds. In Europe, to our surprise, which we learned during the show, is that a lot of the mattress manufacturers also manufacture their adjustable beds. So it's a little bit of a different concept. So we had to, to pivot and change the way we marketed, which uh, eventually worked. Um, and we started getting some, some results with uh, some additional uh, adjustable bed offerings to the current adjustable beds that these um, European mattress companies were offering uh, off so that our product could fit in as a more niche uh, American looking furniture looking uh, kind of product. So we, we, so IMM allowed us to, to notice that, that the European market was a little bit different than the U S market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how was, well, it seems like your brand was very, very well received. Did you say you already found some top clients at the very first edition of, of IMM? Uh, yes. Um, it, it was well received and I'll, I'll let Monica, uh, comment on that because she's our, our director of marketing. Monica, what, what is your, um, what, what comments would you like to make about our, the reception of our brand in Europe? Uh, well, uh, Guy's working with us since the beginning. Uh, I'm more, I'm more recent in the, in the company, but what, uh, I felt is the, the European market, um, and the, the international clients that visited the IMM Cologne uh, are, um, are searching uh, innovation. And we, um, what we feel uh, is um, when we, we show our innovation in the adjustable uh, basis and uh, our new uh, sleep technology and the smart system, um, is uh, these kind of things that clients are searching in this type of exhibitions, uh, as Claire told, told us uh, um, in the, during the presentation. Uh, so what we, we are trying to do is um, during the IMM, uh, using this opportunity to, to create uh, in our booth some experiential, experiential areas uh, to, to show to our clients and to, to give the opportunity to test our products. And uh, the feedback that we received for the client is very positive because they can visit IMM and they can find uh, some different uh, new solutions and new products for the sector. Uh, so yeah, it's very positive for us. That's great. And going back to, to also what he said before, you obviously had to make adjustments to, to fit into the European market. How long of a process was that? Yeah, that, that was early on. So mm -hmm. we've, sh we've shown at IMM pretty much almost, every, not all of them in the last 12 years since I've joined the company, but most of them. Um, um, there were actually some years that we had to say, Hey, let's, let's not show this year because there's a lot of ad adapting we have to do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, there is a learning curve. You know, um, I like to say that I, I used, I used to run the, the international market for the company. Now I, I run the U S as well. So I used to be more focused on international and I used to say that, you know, you should, you should focus more on the similarities than on the differences between you, the U S and the international market, because there's a lot more similarities than there are differences. But it gets to a point that you do have to focus on those differences and, and, and adapt and pivot. So to answer your question, Cassia, um, it probably took us about three to four years of showing there and, and, and looking what the local market was doing. And, and maybe we could have done it quicker if we had more resources. But just the fact that we were there showing for a few years, we learned a lot. And there, there's, there's, again, what is the local market doing? How do they sell? Go visit their stores to see how, what's the reality in the store. Um, like I'll give you an example. We work with mattresses in, in Holland. When you go buy a mattress, you sit down and you have a, a, like an espresso or a latte with the, with the salesperson. Whereas in the United States, everything is quick. You walk in, you're there for maybe 20, 30 minutes and you walk out in Europe. It can two, three hour sales process. So, um, you have to adapt to that. Um, it's the same thing with during the show. European visitors and some of the international visitors expect you to, to serve them coffee, serve them lunch and spend some quality time with them. Whereas in America, things are a little bit more, more fast paced and, and quicker and more, 
uh, let's call it more practical. In Europe, you need to be a little bit more uh, on giving your time and, and your resources on, on the front end before you see the results. So, so it took us a few years to figure that out, but we did. Uh, now, because basically because of IMM and because of the success we've had in Europe and Russia and the Middle East, um, we, we have very good business in Europe, Russia, Middle East, which we include as part of Europe, right, our, our, our company. Uh, we, we, um, uh, we opened an office in Eastern Europe about six years ago. We have a, a smaller office in Portugal now. By the way, Portugal is awesome. Everyone visit our office. You're welcome to go, to come there. Um, and uh, physical presence. I think we lost your connection. Can you say the last couple of sentences? We're talking about your yeah. um, European offices, both in Portugal and Eastern Europe. Yeah, correct. We have no, an we office. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. 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 We have an office in Eastern wow. Europe and now in, in Portugal as well, and um, with about 10 employees. So IMM was certainly important for us to develop the European market, learn it, and, and establish our presence there. That's fantastic to hear. I mean, oftentimes we have um, manufacturers from North America who are very interested in the show. They're very interested in exhibiting, and sometimes they do. And after the first experience, they ask themselves a question, what now? What's next? So it's it's very helpful to have you guys and to kind of give those kind of companies an encouragement that it's a process, right? Uh, it's all about just learning the market and um, and maybe if you, if you wanted if if you could give some a few words of encouragement to such companies who would be interested in potentially showing an IMM, what kind of tips would you give to those companies who are ready to go internationally but just don't know how to start where to start? Um, so you said it best, Kasia, it's a process. You cannot expect to go to IMM and in the first trade show, uh, you know, have, have a lot of sales come out of it. You're probably going to have to go there a few times. Um, so that's, that's tip number one, show there a few times, learn it, adapt it, improve your booth. You'll see that the booths in, uh, in, in Cologne are much nicer than the ones we see in the U S. Um, you can see here in the pictures how from 2016 to, um, to 2020, how our booth um, evolved and became better. You just, you just have to have a, a nice booth. Europeans are a lot more aesthetic and design oriented than, than North Americans are. Uh, so it's a process and you have to learn and you have to be there for a few years. The other thing is what I like to preach is focus on the similarities. There's a lot of things that are the same between the European market and the and the U.S. market. People like to be treated fairly. People like to, to, to buy beautiful products. They like to buy for a good price. If you focus on the things that work for both markets, that's a good start. And then once you figure that out, try to see, but what are the differences here? And it's going to be different with every, you know, I work with mattresses and, and adjustable beds. If you work with case goods or, or interior design, you're going to have to figure that out on your own. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for your feedback and maybe just uh, as the last question um, in terms of going back to your post show follow up. Uh, did you make any trips to Europe to, to potentially see your clients that you have met at IMM. How did you uh, work with establishing those relationships. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Yes, absolutely. Not only did we go back to follow up with the customers, which is very important. You got to go visit them in their in their hometowns and take them out to dinner and all that. Obviously, that's part of doing business. Um, it's important for you if you're committed to to uh, exp to expanding in the European market to start a local operation. Even if it's hiring one rep, one sales rep, you have to go back, you have to follow up, and you have to establish your presence in Europe for sure. Great, wonderful. Well, uh, thank you so much again for being with us. I think that concludes my little Q and A session with both of you and Monica. Uh, and thanks again for being our valued exhibitor. And we look forward to having you back uh, this coming January. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, any, Q, any questions uh, that anyone would like to address at this point? Again, as a reminder, you can write them in, your, in our chat room. And uh, if there's no questions, we will go ahead and continue uh, with our last speaker for the day. Uh, our last speaker for the day is Myri Butiman. Uh, as Meta had introduced her in the beginning of, of the session. Um, Mayri, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. 
Yeah, well, thanks for having me. This is fun. Great. So uh, Mary's with, she, she's a freelance journalist for the Interior Design Magazine and based in Berlin. Uh, she's been to IMM Cologne multiple times. Um, how many years have you been coming to IMM, Mary? Um, I have been coming to IMM since 2007 was my first year. I think I have been to a total of eight, but to be honest, I've lost track. <laughs> Great. So as you can see on this slide, uh, Mayri also covers other European design shows, and she'll talk to us in a moment which ones she attends. Um, so you've answered our first question. I'll go ahead to the next one. Um, since you do attend other um, European shows, including uh, the show in, in Paris, Maison Objet and Isaloni in Milan, um, can you maybe start off with telling us how different is IMM Cologne from these shows? Sure. Um, well, just one second, uh, one sentence about myself. I was Definitely. working in Europe five years uh, for Interior Design Magazine, and then I became a, a freelancer by running away to Europe. Um, I write for several different design magazines, but um, Interior Design has always been a big client of mine. Um, so in terms of going to the other shows, the difference between Paris and Milan, um, there is, of course, a regional, a regional focus on uh, product at these fairs. So in Germany, you're going to see a lot of fantastic German design in Italy, Italian, and Paris, um, French. So um, the other thing is that Milan is really the big fair, uh, and you're always going to see um, big launches from everyone there. And in IMM, it's mostly gonna be German launches, though there are increasingly uh, a lot of other manufacturers that are using that platform to launch as well. Um, in, at Maison and Objet, there's a lot of tabletop and decorative items. Um, and in Milan is all encompassing, whereas IMM, the main focus is residential, but that is also branching out into hospitality increasingly and the office since both are also getting more residential. Great, and Mayri, why is it important to you, um, for you to, to be at IMM Cologne? Why do you continue to come and, and cover the show? Um, as a journalist covering design trade shows, I'm always looking for freshly launched products, innovations, and trends. IMM is the first furniture show of the year and also one of the biggest, and as it is an important fair in the industry for the magazines I represent, coverage of it is also important. Great. Uh, now on the next question for you. Uh, what can North Americans who attend IMM take away from this show that they would not see in the US or Canadian shows? The vibrant European design scene. Um, naturally at IMM, it's going to be a focus on what is really Europe's economic powerhouse, so that's Germany. Uh, quality and craftsmanship are the pillars of the made in Germany stamp. The majority of German manufacturers, as well as several other high profile Germ uh, European manufacturers, uh, they're gonna use IMM for their launches. So it's a really good tool to glean an understanding of what's upcoming in the product design field in Europe and Germany. Um, then also, as you mentioned earlier, Das Haus, uh, this is the annual concept home and every year built by a young designer, um, though this year I understand it's going to be a bit different with the apartment concept. Um, this, this is a really big deal from a, a journalistic standpoint because you're going to see a hot young talent and um, it's exciting. I always like to see what the new products are going to be in the house. There tends to be innovation and always something a little bit surprising. And so I'm always going to be following that designer as the years go by as well um, from their debut in Das House. Great. It's, it's definitely an attraction is in the buzz of the show. Yeah, and actually it's interesting because Moot Design this year did outside in in the merger of those spaces. And now with COVID-19, you know, there is a big focus um, on out being outside because it's safer. So um, I think kind of accidentally the DOS House of 2020 was really relevant. 
Great. We actually have some uh, designers and architects as well as manufacturers um, joining us this morning. What would you say to those who have never been to IMM Cologne? Well, it is a big show, so there's always a schedule. It comes in handy to provide method to the madness. Um, organize your hit list. I, I would say that what I always look out for, which is always particularly interesting, is of course Dust House, but also whenever does any designer speaks, I'm always curious about what the designers have to say. Um, so I make that a priority. Um, one thing that I've actually started to do recently is I, I've downloaded a bike share app and I end up biking to the fair and that way you get a memorable journey over the Rhine and maybe you can then eat another Himmel and Erd, which is a traditional local blood sausage and mashed potatoes and wash it down with more Kirsch beer. So. And burn it, off, burn it off with riding back to your hotel, right? Exactly. <laughs> Great, great. Well, thank you, Marie, for being with us. That concludes my questions, my little Q&A session with you. Uh, thank you for being, our, for attending IMM Cologne and for covering the show. Um, and then we'll go ahead and, and take any questions if there are any. Okay, I think we answered everybody's questions this morning. <laughs> Well, if you have any questions, post our presentation. Here's our contact information for our staff uh, in North America based out of our Chicago office. Myself and two of my colleagues, Franz Balve and Leslie Fleck, uh, we can address any questions you may have related to either exhibiting uh, or, or visiting the show. So here's our contact information and we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, you can call us, email us, you can find us uh, through our social media channels. You also see the links uh, on the slide that we're showing right in front of you. Uh, and as I'm talking, I think we got one question. We have one question actually, great, thank you. <laughs> Before we end, uh, will home offices play a bigger part at next IMM Cologne? So I guess that's a question for you, Claire, if you can help us answer. Uh, yes, of course it will. We have um, the focus on, on future of work is uh, dedicated to Augatech, but of course um, the topic and as the, there is no clear separation and due to Corona, we are all working at home, so this is going to be uh, um, a topic, of course, at, at Diamond Cologne. I would love to add to that one if I could. Yes, um, of course. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I mean, it is a very trying time, but it is also an exciting time in terms of what the future holds. And I think in the, on a, from a design standpoint, in the home office, we're going to see more on of a dedicated space. Uh, working from the kitchen table in an uncomfortable kitchen chair with noisy children or spouses or dogs running around is no longer gonna be realistic. So we're going to see a focus on acoustical paneling and um, noise absorption. And this is gonna have to be a space in the home that is really only for home office working now. Um, so that is something I see going forward, particularly with big companies moving their entire workforce to the home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now going back, Mayri, to your, uh, you coming to IMM, do you also visit Living Kitchen or do you primarily focus on IMM? Uh, yes, I do Living Kitchen as well. Yep. And Orgatech, I go to you know, the other fairs as well. Fantastic. Great. All right, let's see. If we have maybe we should just, uh, sorry to, to just add a comment. Since um, Orgatech was, was brought up, maybe we should just add for those who are not familiar with Orgatech that, that it's, it's our um, office um, uh, furniture show, um, focuses on, on facilities management and everything related to the work environment. And that show takes place every two years in, in Cologne, whereas, of course, I'm in Cologne is, is every year um, in, in January. So just wanted to add that for clarification. Great. Thank you, Meta. And I have one last thing. Um, uh, maybe also one of my projects I, I like the most is the Pure Talents Contest. And uh, this is a contest for um, students who are graduating, all the young designers. And I think we had about 
1,000 um, 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 drafts who were sent in, and there's a very nice jury who took um, care of those um, entries. And we have the 20 finalists who present their products. And I think speaking about, okay, uh, will um, um, home, uh, home working or mobile working be part of, of, of I'm, I'm Cologne, I'm really um, I'm curious about what brings, what is, what is moving this next generation. And, um, and, and I always had the pleasure to, to meet those 20, guy, 20 people or, or finalists and they presented their products and they have a very clear um, 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 and very um, innovative perspective on, on seeing things. And even maybe they weren't uh, um, sitting home and having um, maybe children and dogs, but I think that this topic, how will we work in the future, will uh, I'm for sure also inspire some of the, of the finalists who will be presented at the Pure Talents Contest in 2021. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, if there are any, aren't any more questions or comments, we'd like to thank you once again for being with us today. And we look forward to seeing you at IMM Cologne 2021, January 18th through the 24th.